Hello, everyone. Today in Principles of Human Movement, we will discuss the gluteus maximus. You can see here in the picture, it is highlighted in red. It's a pretty large muscle on the back side of the body. It's also known as the buttocks. It is on the posterior aspect of the hip joint, the largest, most superficial of all gluteal muscles. Gluteus maximus is a portion of the lumbo-pelvic hip complex, and collectively this group of muscles is known as the body's core. It is the link between the upper and lower extremities. The glute max is a powerful hip joint extensor, external rotator, and assists in hip adduction. It provides pelvic stabilization while in an upright position to maintain balance upon the femoral heads. It is the largest and heaviest muscle in the body with the capacity to generate great force during running, hopping, skipping, squatting, and jumping. On this picture here, you can see the origin. And you can see the insertion on labeled in blue. Muscle anatomy and fiber arrangement. The origin is on the posterior one fourth of the iliac crest, posterior surface of the sacrum and coccyx near the ilium and the thoracolumbar fascia. The insertion is the oblique ridge, gluteal tuberosity, or known as a gluteal tuberosity, on the lateral surface of the greater trochanter and the iliotibial tract is where it terminates on the lateral side of the knee. Innervation is supplied by the inferior gluteal nerve originating from L5, S1, S2, and it is a branch of the sacral plexus. The, it is radiate or convergent fiber arrangement, which allows for greater range of motion and endurance. So I'm going to show this video, and please note that the muscle is- Hey, everyone. It's Matt. Highlighted in green. You can see that everywhere highlighted in green is the origin or portions of the origin. The green portion on this side shows the caudal fibers, gluteal tuberosity insertion, and the iliotibial tract, which terminates on the lateral aspect of the knee. Muscle action during activities of daily living. So sit to stand is a concentric contraction of the gluteus maximus during ascent to cause hip extension and upright posture. And the reverse is true um, when you sit down, the, it is an eccentric contraction during the descent. An example of external hip rotation is sitting with a figure four leg crossed over the opposite thigh. So you can see here in this middle picture with the woman with the green top sitting in the chair, she's got her leg crossed over the opposite side. And that's a pretty good example of uh, sitting cross-legged. Some people do this throughout their day. And that is external hip rotation in action. Also standing upright from a forward bend engages glute max to extend the hip joint. So this last picture here, this woman is bent forward. You know, just to pretend, imagine that you know she's picking something off of the ground, and then you know standing back up. That would activate the glute max to return to an upright position. Strength and stretch. So let's talk about strengthening the glute max. A basic activation exercise would be glute bridge, and this is a great way to rehab an injured muscle or an inactive muscle. And it's a great way to prepare the muscle to, for heavier loads. So going first, you'd wanna start out on two legs and then a progression would be single leg group, glute bridge. In this video here, you can see the woman is lifting her pelvis only until the point where it aligns with the knees and shoulder. And you wanna maintain that straight line to avoid hyperextension of the spine. And that's not the goal in this position.
the progression is single leg glute bridge. This is a great way to work um, hip extension on one side and hip flexion on the other. So isolating the single portion of uh, the single side, especially if there is an imbalance observed on one side. You can see here the setup. One hip is in flexion, the other is ready and planted. Ankles dorsiflexed. And you only wanna to lift to the point where you see that line from the knee, hip, and shoulder, avoiding hyperextension. All right, another exercise to strengthen the glute muscle is the Romanian deadlift, starting out on two legs and then progressing to the single leg RDL. This video here shows um, some examples of many exercises that isolate the gluteus maximus. So let's just run through those. There's a glute max, there's a kickback, there's hip extension. They're stepping up like a box step or an airborne lunge. There's an example of the RDL. Imagine the skeleton has a bar across in, in his hands. Here's using a platform to do hip extension again, strengthening the glute max. There's an example of the single leg RDL with dumbbells. And that little guy is hammering in the glute max and it's insertion. Here's a hip hinge, bending forward, picking the kick back. and an example of the glute bridge. A basic stretch is to either sit in a chair or recline on the ground and simply just cross your leg in a figure four. That could be a sufficient stretch for some people. M the midway point or moving towards the full expression would bring the hips into flexion. And then that would be isolating the stretch on in this, in this photograph here on the, on the right side. A progression or a deeper stretch would be Ardha Matsyandrasana. This is a yoga posture called half Lord of the fish. You can see in the black and white photo here, the gentleman is in maximal hip flexion with internal rotation and this will definitely stretch the glute muscle. There's a lot of things going on in this um, yoga posture, but we'll just talk about the glute max for today. As you can see, he's in a twist. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, muscles being stretched and toned in this position. It's a great pose, feels very comfortable. A common injury or dysfunction is gluteal inhibition. Now there is a close relationship between sacroiliac dysfunction and gluteal inhibition. So a clinician must run the patient through multiple functional muscle tests to determine if there is an SI joint dysfunction. It is also uh, observed Asymmetry is observed um, on the affected side. So in this photograph here, the patient is lying prone on an exam table. And if you look closely, you can see that the right buttocks has a more rounded shape. And the left side looks a little flatter, a little bit more muscle atrophy. This imbalance or asymmetry um, causes poor mobility. So you'll see poor hip extension, muscle weakness, the inability to like get up from a sit to stand, maybe in an older or sedentary person or someone who has injured this muscle or has a low uh, spinal injury. 
hip flexors and hamstrings overcompensate for gluteal inhibition. So these overactive muscles can also contribute to poor mobility. Another example of gluteal inhibition is inactivity and poor movement patterns. So running through those exercises that we talked about earlier on those previous screens with, um, you know, without focus or poor positioning, sloppy movement patterns can activate muscles in areas that we're not trying to, or get joints to move in areas that we're not trying to move. So you always wanna be mindful about how your body is positioned and make sure that you research or are being trained by someone with the knowledge of correct alignment. Also sitting at a desk for many hours, writing PowerPoints and lecturing and listening to lectures can contribute to gluteal inhibition. So you wanna make sure that you get up frequently throughout your day. You wanna make sure that you include exercises that activate and strengthen the glute muscle. And when you're writing yourself or when you're with your trainer or clinician, you wanna make sure that you have a well-rounded fitness program, strength program that targets these muscles. It's also good um, for aesthetics. So nobody wants to have flat bottom. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Marcelo Martinez, and this was the Glute Max. Thank you.